Hello, hey guys, how you doing? Okay, let's get into uh, this one. We're gonna do um, kind of like a semi end game study kind of setup. This is the U.S. Open. This is uh, Yarrow versus Ray Robinson. So one second, I'm gonna get a sip. We'll get started. Okay. Yarrow is white and Ray is black. Oh, kind of, this is the, um, I believe they did, if I'm not mistaken, the Queen's Gambit declined, and that's kind of a favorite for right now. Hey, how you doing? C6. C takes D. C takes D. Uh, Knight C3. We're doing, um... Uh, Ray Ro um, Yarrow versus Ray Robinson from the U.S. Uh, championship right now. So it's uh, from the game uh, uh, earlier this morning. And so we're, this has really good, the reason I'm going to do it is it has a really good end game study that we're going to work on. And it shows, it shows how... Uh, king activity really dominates the entire game, and when a king works together with connected pass pawns, how strong uh, it is. It's even more stronger when it uh, than a rook sometimes. Knight uh, f6. Actually, I'm sorry. It was the exchange slav variation. I I'm sorry. I thought it was the. Uh, I think that was the one that we're going to be doing, the Fabiano one. I believe that one might have been um, the queen scan with the client. I'll have to check. We're going to do two tonight. And then um, we'll do puzzles too. So so knight c3, 6. It's kind of a very, if you notice, slow. This kind of reminds me of similar to like a London system with um, e3. See how kind of the setup of the London system but without a C pawn. So very similar. So the queen comes in and look, even there there's the queen move. Usually it's black though that plays it in the London. And there's usually a pawn here and a pawn there and then his queen comes out uh, here and then we bring our queen out there and we challenge each other, but Yarrow has the actually first strike of an attack at this moment. So um, Bishop B4. Pins are really important. My teacher taught me, and so just keep an eye out for it, especially when it's an absolute pin. The knight comes in. He takes. B takes. Knight takes. And bishop, you you were we really are not set up for a uh, London system. So taking like this and uh, wrecking your structure isn't a really wise idea. In this scenario, you want to take with the bishop because you don't have um, you don't have enough material at this moment to merit fracturing this structure in here. And you're also attacking the the queen. I mean the b pawn, and attacking the knight, and per, per, uh, pretty soon coming out with uh, bishop to b6. Okay. So castles. Rook c1. Okay, we'll take a look at this. So we'll see, and then we'll. Uh, okay. There. Oh, five days ago. Interesting. Okay, we'll take a look at. Okay, so we're doing the. This is the Madison attack, in London. Yeah. Let's get to a really important part. Yeah, what what question do you have? Oh, this, oh, right here. Okay, this, the reason I let this happen was I 
one and dash you get a uh, three pawn advance with my uh, my king my, my I'm on the king side because I was gonna castle potentially castle queen side and so I'm not really too worried it, I could prepare uh, g5 yeah the, um, this is actually a line of the London it's not normally played um, it's kind of the reason it is is you have to be okay with it's not your center isn't as strong as when when it's like this with your pawn structure but it's this is uh, all based on pawn play because I have a bishop, a queen bishop, sorry, queen bishop, and knight guarding this square, and there's enough that I can start the pawn rolling up the board, and I actually have four pawns, so this base pawn here really helps with the chain, and it I use it to really good effect. And it's it's really interesting. I was surprised that he took. To be honest, I was like, huh. But he really only has he he if he doesn't he um. I guess he could have retreated back, huh? But I just I just like the uh, I guess the next if he was to play here I'd probably play there. Because this is my idea of just overwhelming if he plays here that I'd play there. If he took, and then he'd potentially have to play back here. Well, nope, I'm sorry, he'd have to move his knight. And then at that point, I'd play... Um, actually, I could, can't play that yet. Uh, let me see. Probably have to play this first, and then play there. So he then he'd have to retreat back. And then if he plays here, which is actually probably not the best move he could bring a knight in so mm, I don't know I think that's what he's for yeah I like the yeah this uh, this one was really interesting on uh, his his queen got trapped eventually his uh, I was just kicking him back and and it just it just kept hitting him harder and then the bishop came in and if that's played then you can actually slide over he plays g6 and I'm trying to find points of entry so I, I don't think this was um, the best move I probably that well let me see I knew that he was going to take, so maybe taking actually might have been best here. Oops. I kind of, I think I might have slightly uh, made an inaccurate move. And if he plays there, I, I have that, so. Or I can just, at that point, bring my rook over. And then I have the potential of rerouting. So, I don't know if queen h3 three was best in that scenario. When he pushed onward, when I pushed onward and he did that, I knew I had time to break the position down. I brought my bishop back. Did you play queen h3? So, yeah, well, kind of. It was, it yeah, I did, but it was. It's it's kind of an awkward move. He had to have played incorrectly for for this kind of have worked. Yeah, yeah. And so I I I would say that I did probably. My idea was actually to go here. Yeah. Yeah, because it's. I was wanting to get as much pressure on here as I can, but or could, 
and I, I was able to do that and then I was going to bring my the reason I brought my bishop back was I want to stop that at all costs and then it frees this um, this rook up also I it's a pretty good defender if he ever gets a little too uh, you know happy go lucky and goes in here so B, B4 was played and then I go knight h5 which this was my whole plan if he plays there then it's all over so he has to move there and then I I just I bring in all the forces first there this actually was a um, better was this that's uh, that's actually a, a, an Arabian mate I, uh, I played that and it stills mate but if you like the uh, Arabian mate ideas um, back here this this move right here is the best it just shows you the the power of the London system if um, adequately played not a problem it's um, you just have to really be careful because uh, in the in the London system some lines blacks whole idea is queenside attack so sometimes you have to uh, stop for just a second to neutralize that or if you know it's coming try to hurry as quick as you can to get your attack uh, rolling down the board otherwise uh, it's not going to be pretty because if he gets his queen side pawns rolling you're in trouble <clears throat> yeah but that yeah that's that's the London system in in uh, really good form if you want to think about it okay I'll put that there and then we'll do th this one here yeah that wasn't that was a good game but it was actually the first time I I did some research on leaving my bishop here with the trade and I was kind of a little concerned I'm used to usually just kicking it back all the way to g3 but when I played here and he took I knew that I was would be able to because my queen and bishop were here get the majority that I needed to crunch the queen king side and potentially I probably should have castled queen side might have been better but when he had his rook like that I didn't really want to do that because <laughs> it's a little scary so sometimes uh, the white king's actually safer in the center in the London sometimes okay H and I, I liked when uh, when Yarrow played this I'm like yay he's he's playing our friend Harry I'm like oh yes I was like good great great job Yarrow F6 which um, Ray did not like this attack here also this gives his king a flight square and potentially if need be the the bishop can reroute and then potentially the knight can reroute to guard the king so you have a bishop and then you have king then you have potentially a rook and if these pawns get going then you can double rooks to protect um, his king so this has this is a pretty flexible move also it's attacking this bishop too so it's a pretty good move Yarrow has to drop all the way back and so but remember he doesn't really have a he doesn't have to worry about an attack on there because his bishop blocks the advance of this pawn so uh, Queen d2 is played and now somehow he's going to try to maybe get into the king side that way but I don't know if that that'll actually work and he might want to start that too because the queen here really wasn't doing anything and you'll know you've reached the middle game when these two rooks are connected when the rooks are connected 
uh, you've reached the middle game. So Ray has actually, if you want to think about it, developmentally wise, he's ahead because he's reached the middle game before Yaro. But Yaro has, um, I know it sounds funny, a slightly safer king because this does make uh, this does make a little air with this queen eyeing this uh, this pawn. He can't push, and this queen if this queen ever moves like over here, that pawn falls with check. So my teacher told me that even if there's a pawn structure like like this. Like this, I'll just go back real quick. Remember that that doesn't mean that the piece that's right here is safe. He told me that these pawns will eventually have to move, and when they do, the piece that's there is really, really not uh, is really not safe. So even if you have a structure like this, just remember you have to guard uh, the key points. Okay, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, bishop comes out, b5. Which is really a good move because it takes full advantage of the queen, queen's awkward spot and it stops that from the pawn push from actually starting. And it also allows for castling potentially. And then Yarrow has reached the, um, the middle game. <clears throat> but at this moment, uh, Yarrow doesn't really want to castle because this is very very similar to a London system because in some lines of the London you actually intentionally keep your king in the center so that you can um, use fling these pawns down the board and then you just overwhelm because the opponent's king is castled so and then rook a c8 Yeah, once this bishop had accomplished his goal, there's no real reason for it to stay here because it's not doing anything. He needs to bring, get his bishop involved for um, g4 and potentially uh, h5, so g4, h5. Then maybe um, f3 and uh, Ray would have to move his knight out and there'd be a lot of problem. So first move f3 was played the knight goes to d6 and then the queen moves because now if you notice there's the pin so they're always always keeping their eyes out on the pins a tactic can actually lead to a plan so if you if you have a tactic in mind you can combine a lot of ideas together to make this tactic work. Which is, this is a, of course a one move tactic which is a pin so. But if there had to been like, if they had to trade off some pieces like trade trade and then they got to this, that would be a three move combo that ended up with a pin. Rook c6, c3, oh wow. Once that opens up, oh, and he also has uh, king f2, which really safeties his king. So rook a6 takes, queen takes, queen takes, and d takes. Now that the ladies have come off the board, we've entered um, somewhat of an end game. And so we're now looking at how does Yarrow win this endgame? He's got a very awkward majority on the, it's kind of like a king side, queen side majority pyramid like thing. And I don't know how to, I don't know how to do it because <laughs> there's some pawns that are on the queen side and then some that are on the king side so it's a I guess a mezzo majority I guess he has it's an in-between majority that's what I mean uh, c5 was played so 
Yarrow is trying to neutralize this rook, and the rook can't go here, here. If it goes there, then this bishop comes in, and then there's a lot of problem for um, Ray. Rook c6, oop, g4. <clears throat> yeah, I guess Yarrow figures, why worry about the queen side? Now he's got a free hand on the king side, so... And then remember, he can always go to king to f2 now. So this rook is well placed, and this other rook will potentially slide over with this to boot after this bishop goes bye-bye. <coughs> Excuse me. And so he's, yeah, Yarrow's like saying, bishop, be gone, see you later. King d2. <clears throat> I, I, I see the merit in this move because this now is locked down. This is locked down. Potentially, that might not have been a bad idea after moving there. This might not have been a bad idea because then he would have had to retreat back. And then you have a pawn push. And then you takes and takes. And now you have a, a weakness here. And so this rook would have to come up and then potentially there. And if he tries that, then king comes. Oh, you can't come. Sorry, wrong, wrong king move. You probably would want to come over this way. And it takes, takes. And um, the rook would have to come there. And so... I don't know, still a little uh, not to what I would prefer because then he has doubling now. So I don't, I don't know. Oh, can you check the engine? Okay, why not bishop d5? Why does engine, why does play bishop d5? Where's d5? Oh, why, oh, bishop takes. Oh, you mean bishop takes? Why, why not bishop d5? d5, d5. Oh, oh. Okay, let me see back here. Let me see. Where is that bishop d5? After, oh, after bishop e8, okay. We'll get, we'll get that, hold on. Why, okay, it's forward more. I gotcha, I see. Oh, why not bishop here, right? I meant after bishop, okay, bishop e8. Are you talking? Oh, B. Oh, I see. You're saying Bishop B. Okay, let's let's see why that's yeah. Bishop uh, uh, B5. You mean yeah? Gotcha. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Slightly. It's still better for uh, white. So let's actually see what. Um, the computer wants after this line here. Okay. Okay, what is it? What does it like? So we were right. We were thinking. I just want to see. So I will. We. Oh, oh, he. The computer does like his move. Huh. I guess it stays more close than there. Oh right, all right. Well, he did do bishop. Uh, he did do bishop b5, but just a little later. So we were right. We were just we were just one move uh, ahead. We were one move just uh, ahead too too far. Uh, yeah. And this is 
this is rather interesting of a position because if you notice the position is really locked up but it's soon going to be opened up and so the rook goes back and so potentially let me see here I don't know, I kind of like this setup here. Oops. I kind of like Yaro's setup. I think he's I think he's winning in this in this line. I think he should have uh after this. Let me see where where did we do that? Okay, there, there. I still think he should have traded here. And if he play if they play that, then you take there. And it's even worse for um for black in this scenario. Potentially I guess he could play there. Then you bring your rook over and tries to hold that but then that falls so I think best in that scenario is actually here and maybe just taking here I think taking probably would be best that way and then and then if you let me see what could he actually do here if he takes 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 takes, takes, king up, king up, king over, up, over, up, over, up, over. <clears throat> maybe we want to just, maybe we want to rather than go a4, maybe we just want to go uh, a, a3 and see what he does, because he has to do all the moves. And then potentially we'd want to go there. And then if he comes here, we want to go there. If he comes there, we potentially would want to play here. And then if here, now that that tempo move comes in handy. And so if he goes this way, we come here, he comes up, and then we win the pawn. So. It was a good idea that we only moved it up once. If we moved it up uh, twice, I believe it may have been a draw. So Yarrow is actually winning in this scenario. Any way you look at it, he's he's in he's uh, winning. So so this was an interesting idea taking there. But he went for more of an attack. It was for sure. I really didn't like that that move sequence actually. Cause this structure he does have a passer, but it's going to need a lot of defense to kind of help it down the road. But now now he has the accessibility point, so Bishop's going to have to, it's forced to go here now. So F4 is played, forced, because he's got to try to do like what we did before, lock the position down. But we were in a better end game, rook end game. I mean a king versus pawn end game, so. But a lot of the uh, players want to stay more in the center, or I'm sorry, the middle game, because there's a lot of tactical play. But it's good to sometimes go into an end game, especially back when um, Robinson's Ray Robinson's um, uh, structure was so kind of weird looking before all this got traded off I believe that structurally wise pawn structure wise or they call it pawn skeleton 
Yaro had a better pawn skeleton, and I believe that he could have won in the long run. And we actually showed that. 31 moves further out beyond the one that he had, he would have won. So. But sometimes, the, like, but what I said is they don't want to go to the middle game. There's a lot more interesting play, I like what you would say, I like what you just said, interesting um, um, in the middle game. So rook a8. And the problem with Ray, he's a really excellent player. He gets into time trouble, though, and so that's kind of one of his... Um, weaknesses he needs to get over time pressure and he just he just calculates way too long and uh, my teacher taught me to get over that I used to have the same problem I used to try to calculate every single line he, he told me you know what there's only a certain amount of lines that actually work be be smart in your calculation and be efficient with your time and so it really helped me and I actually beat a lot of players um, because they got low on time and I had a large amount of time reserve and I could think and they had to move fast because they had to play on the increment the 30 second increments and I, I won a, a lot of games that way many a, I shouldn't say a lot a many a games that way that's what I should say So, okay, then he provoked um, this. Oh, yeah. That's going to be, that will be an interesting uh, game for sure. Or, yeah, championship, uh, our world championship match. I, I, I still think Fabi has a really good chance. A lot of, um, uh, Writers and chests have kind of counted uh, Fabi out, like, um, but I still think that he could bring his A game. I really do believe that. And I also believe that um, Wesley it shouldn't be counted out either, because potentially he would he could go for the world too. You know, it just it just wasn't his uh, caddies tournament this time. Next time he might do. Um, better and uh, he's also young too so it comes with experience and Fabi you have to put you have to make up your mind what you want to do and Fabi was tired of not wanting to you know make it the candidates and he did it Oh. Oh yeah. Well, did uh, have you watched? Um, they had um, the champion showdown. I'm not exactly sure. Fabi actually played Alexander, um, and they they went from 30 minutes to 15 minutes to 10 minutes to five minutes, and they didn't have any time increment added on and Fabi really did good in uh, fast play against Alexander uh, I hope I pronounced his name right Grushchek he played Alexander Grushchek and um, won he actually was behind and he ended up um, winning the majority of the quick games and so I, I think that Fabi has a pretty good uh, yeah yeah, it's a, uh, it was really good. Nakamura played against um, Topolov. Uh, Magnus, I mean, not Magnus. Yeah, Magnus played against Ding Lauren. I'll, I'll start out with the, with uh, the, uh, Magnus played against Ding Lauren. Those two played. Um, then it was uh, Wesley So, and I forgot the um, Cuban Grandmaster's name. Uh, he played, uh, Wesley and him played. Uh, Fabiano and Alexander uh, Grushchek played, and then it was Topolov and Nakamura played, and it was a, it's really good. They, there's like I think it's four days, four or five days. Magnus plays against Sting on the second day, 
it, it, they uh, those three uh, are six players. Uh, started the first day, then Magnus and Dink, uh, Lauren comes the second day, and so it's really interesting. So E5 was played. It's on it's on YouTube. I think they I think it's on St. Louis Chess Club. If you're interested in uh, that that that's a really good one. I believe it's let's see, I think it's day four that. Um, and Wesley also comes back at, at the fourth day, too. It was really interesting. It's like Wesley and Fabiano really did good on the fast play uh, game. So F takes E. F takes E, okay. Wow. Kind of see if he plays that there that he has a check there. Uh, not sure if I like that. I guess it's forced, isn't it? Okay, you don't play that there. That hell. Okay, I see. I see. Okay, so you're taking advantage of that. I gotcha. Okay, so you come over and gobble these. Okay, then you check there, and then he gobbles that, and then you can actually take. Okay. Oh, okay. You create a pass pawn. If he tries, oh, smack. You have to take there, and if he takes there, and that that queens, and it's over. Okay, that's interesting. So. All right, that was good. I'm glad we went over that. That was interesting for sure. But he, I guess he didn't want to go into that. <laughs> Ouch. This is even worse. Now he's got two protected pass pawns. Ouch. That's pain. Yeah, it's over now. So, he can't push. He's got to move his uh, rook off that line. And then you take a check. This is this is the this is the incredible oh thing here. I I was, I was just in awe when he played. He played that move. There's it's like what really? You can actually do that, can't you, Queen? Yeah, but look what happens. There's no way to uh, stop the lady from our, our queen. She can't enter there because of this pawn. 
it's way too slow if, if we enter there because of that. Let's say that, oops. Hold on, queen there. Let's say she tried to enter here. You got check there. And then check. And then you lose a pawn, you lose the queen. Or let's just let's try uh, queen a8. Let's just say, oh wow, yeah, he can't. I was thinking that he can come up here, but he actually can't because of because of that. So let's say he plays here. You still have that problem. Yeah. So ah, uh, did that's an excellent end game right there. He goes there tries there and then h7 he could have played uh, right here that that actually works too because if he tries this then you have that and uh, queen So potentially something like that. Then you then you get checkmate. So it's like wow. So and uh, Ray resigned here because there's really no way. Uh, even if he plays there, you uh, check and you have to take and you just move your. The king has to f go back. Nobody loves to lose to this. Nobody likes to lose to a queen, uh, a queen checkmate. No, we don't want to look at that. But one sec, guys. I'll uh, I'll do a we'll do a puzzle real quick. I'll put the puzzles out. Cause I'll be just right back, really sec, uh, in just a sec. So we'll just we'll do one puzzle, and then we'll get we'll go on to Fabi's games. So just I'll be right back.
Okay. We'll uh, go to Fabi's game now. If you guys have, if you guys were thinking about any of this, um, you could type. Well, let's just see here. We'll just do Fabi's. This one's really good. And then we'll go to that puzzle. So if you guys have have your ideas already put down, we'll we'll get we'll get to that. But this is a really good uh, game as well. I wanted you guys to see it. All right. So D1. I mean, sorry, D1. <laughs> sorry, uh, D4. I mean, Knight F6. Knight F3. Knight. Uh, I mean, C4. And then uh, C5. That's funny. That's the bloom. Bloom. Blue men fields counter gambit. Huh. That's interesting. I've never heard of that one. Huh. C takes D5. But isn't that cool how you can actually use the engine? They usually pick the best moves. Uh, this is the strongest engine we have. We don't have Alpha Zero yet, but that would be that would be nice if it goes uh, free source or open source, so that we can uh, um, use it on our um, the chest cruncher TV. So G G five uh, six, and this is going to end up being Fianchettoed and um, castled more likely that's what um, Jeffrey is thinking so I'm not Jeffrey sorry Fabi I, I'm so I gotta flip the board so Fabi Fianchettos is bishop to g7, e3, um, and then castles h uh, h3, which is an interesting move. Um, bishop to e2 is actually more to the point of the game because if you think about it, you're getting ready to castle. And also after this push, you can implant your bishop here to help out. It's just, it's just more. It's a flexible, more flexible of a move, right here. It also stops the knight potentially if it tries to go in. You can always just reroute it back, and you have a, a battery there. So, but that was not played. H H uh, three, bishop e seven. That wasn't the best. A uh. And then if that ever gets played, you take, and it's actually black who's better here. Black's much better. Not much better, but better, because he then has an open uh, file for his rook to come to. But I don't, I don't think Fabi wanted to have double pawns like that, so I think what he was thinking is potentially here and then maybe bishop out something like that he again Jeffrey missed uh, e2 e2 is huge and it, it's important that you get your king castled I don't know the gambit line that they're that they're playing but I do know principle that you really don't want to uh, uh, keep your king in the center if you don't have to that long. It's just very, um, when you're playing against top 2800 level players, they've they've engined this these positions to the max. And so they know every slight weakness. It's not that they don't make mistakes, but I'm just saying, though, don't give them... Uh, an option to hit you with but I do see kind of I think what Jeff I think Jeffrey was afraid of a sacrifice potentially like that 
something like this after castling and something like that I don't know but it is kind of scary when you have this looking at you though so I don't blame him for not castling but you just have to really be uh, wise when it comes to that knight h5 bishop h2 this is a, a very important move you need to keep this bishop here it's the bishop that's going to um, protect the king if need be uh, bishop can go to g6 or g3 sorry if there's ever a castling and like takes and then something takes and there's like a check this bishop can intercept right there so f5 so Fabi's like all out blitzing right now he smells the king's not safe and uh, he's saying you know what if you're not going to castle your king my friend I will more than happy fling a pawn up the board and make you uh, wish that you had and had of and not have basically left your king there f4 it's just like Jeffrey has to castle here it's imperative then you take this they were talking about that I don't know if that actually I I believe that uh, you would take with the queen here and then he would actually win a You take with the bishop. And the only one, the only uh, sitch is um, that he's a slightly on. Uh, he's not developed on the queen side, so he's gonna have to be careful with with your play. But so that's what Fabi actually talked to Maurice about. Was should he have um, taken here? Are played should he have played rook takes and then allowed something like that to happen or should he have played pawn takes that that was um, that's uh, what was actually played in um, the computer likes bishop takes knight takes and then potentially now probably what would happen if rook takes though okay bishop takes pawn takes queen takes oh ouch you know with that nobody likes having that and then rook takes takes and queen takes hmm I'm not sure this is better for black so So it takes uh, King H1. That's what that's what um, Maurice says. If uh, he had if he had taken, then that would have been a uh, problem because of this pin here. But we have to we have to count the pieces. How many pieces does uh, Black have? They have five. And how many pieces do we have? Five. Yes, um, Black's an exchange up. But look how unsafe his king is. So um, it makes up the activity of Jeffrey's pieces makes up for the loss of the exchange. But just really you really don't want to have that happen to you and Fabi reroutes because he doesn't have to worry about that anymore he now can reroute the bishop moves there this is actually best because you're double attacking here now that has to stay on defense then the and then the bishop intercepts there and after the knight gets kicked out I guess you could expand maybe on the 
Okay, knight there. All right. Yeah, because then you can take scope on that, and then the rook would take there. He no longer has a dark square bishop, so there's nothing. And then if bishop takes, rook takes, I mean, rook there, rook up, and something like that. Well, then you can win the bishop, so he can't play g5. So he'd have to play up there. Then the bishop comes up and developed there. Everybody's developed, so I takes, reroute. e5, rook e2, knight uh, f then e takes, d takes, and then d6, and d takes, which is a pawn sack, check, knight intercepts, and, and knight comes in, he's trying to, uh, See if he can't bring in some damage there. Rook b8. This stops. Uh, so queen takes c, queen takes d, and knight takes b6. Interesting play for sure. e4, which is an error. Slight inaccuracy. f5, uh, bishop f5 was played. Uh, knight c3, rook d, b8, a4, and then a5, locking the position down. Now it's going to be who can maneuver the best. And black used to be the undeveloped one. Now black actually is developed and up a pawn. So it's like, ooh. It's actually now better, slightly better for black here. Okay, uh, yep. So now if this trades, so be it. The king takes and you walk the king closer. Bishop takes, king takes. That actually helps out um, uh, Fabi. Rook f1. And they're threatening to do a sneaky pin here. So e6 is an important move. Look, F8, uh, F6, F1, E, and then F E, and then D6, E3, and then uh, King goes to C6. Now there's no more checks, and this is if he plays Rook takes here, Rook takes, Rook takes, takes. And then you now hit with that and that. And then you have to move your bishop out. Or, or probably more likely that's the best because now you're eyeing that and you're eyeing there. So you take. He takes. Now you're attacking the, rook, the knight. So the knight moves. Then you play more likely here to... Take scope on that. Oh, you move the. Okay, you play there to keep an eye on that. If he plays here, you play there. And you get these pawns rolling. Black's faster because of where the rook is. This rook also guards um, any uh, passer, so it's like, you shall not pass kind of uh, rook. So c6 is played. Knight bd5. Rook e e7. Knight moves. And now the king's, uh, it's funny, it walked from the king's side all the way to the queen's side, and it's safe. And there, that, that was actually a uh, mistake. 
I should have uh, tried to uh, double up on the and then you take there so and then the king would just come in so that, that's oops my bad ah drat where did we go wrong snap there we go sorry about that guys there we go now that was the mistake check check and then now the rook comes down rook f2 Rook F6 there. Excuse me. And he can't take here because, of course, you see there's a uh, sad little fork there. F2. And the pawn takes. He should have taken here at this point. And then the rook would have had to, I believe, take. Yeah. And slightly... This is kind of the line that would happen. And interesting. But he played there. And um, Bobby played bishop uh, c6. And it's all over now. This pawn will, this pawn will uh, start walking down the board. This rook guards the king. This bishop guards this pawn push and then next will be a check the king will have to surrender out let's just uh, let's just play some moves out oh so he can't play there my bad so we gotta get rid of that let's see it's saying rook takes bishop is there anything else that we could play okay oh you win that pawn Okay, I see now why that that's kind of like force now. King takes. the pawn will slowly start and you just take there okay at this point you'd probably have to do that yeah And it's going to end up becoming a queen. So now you guys got to see why Jeffrey resigned. So we'll do some puzzles. And then I got a log. But I, I wanted to show you those two games. I had to show you. Those were like two. There was one with Irina and a Annie. Annie but um, that was a good one too. But I just wanted to show you. the. Those were like. That was an end game to the T. Her. Uh, Annie's one was good as well. It was a mate. She uh, she pressured. She she even uh, there was a point when she missed uh, kind of a setup mate, but then it, Arena missed that she had that, and she was able then to re-implement the same threat, the next move, and um, win. So that well, that does tell us one thing though, guys. Don't. Uh, don't think that the game's over because your opponent might miss a move, the move sequence, and then regroup if you have to get back up, regroup and um, think that you're starting over again in the position so that you don't make a, you don't make a inaccurate move. Okay, enough with that. We need to get in and get our puzzles, get get our puzzles beefed up. Okay.
<sighs> okay. Queen comes from B4 to B2. Pawn takes, king takes. Takes, queen takes pawn. Queen takes, rook takes, rook takes. And then uh, rook uh, check. That's, that's potentially an idea, or is there anything better? Hmm. We may have bishop takes knight, rook takes, and then we push the pawn. And there's no way to, yeah. yeah I believe that this is the move here. Because if he takes here, then that goes up the board and we win. Great find there, guys. Hmm. I'm thinking potentially um, g4 because that that would cut out the um, the escape square. The, if we can get g4 to cut out these two escape squares, then we'll have check and then checkmate. Otherwise, if we do check check, he has two running points to uh, go to. That will actually cement our position if he takes here. That's an that's a losing error. But I'm trying to see if I've uh, if I overlooked any checks or anything. I really don't see the um This has to be the only move. I, I don't really see any uh, other move. I don't see any counter to that. There's no checks that he could play. Because uh, any checking points are guarded. That's guarded, that's guarded, and that's guarded. And that's guarded, that's guarded. That's guarded, that's guarded. Uh, no, that doesn't need to be guarded. Um, so everything is guarded. And these rooks are both guarding each other. And they're on uh, different colors of the bishop. So e g4 is the only move that wins. Because if we go g4, if he plays here, we have the, the mating idea. Check, check, and then this rook comes check. That's first check. King was there. The second check comes here and it's over. Even if you played here, it's still over. So this has to be that's got. Oh, really? Hmm. What am I missing here? Why doesn't uh
Oh, okay, yeah, all right. Snap, I missed. I missed that he can, uh, I missed that after the check he can actually, okay. What if he takes there, though? Oh, the pawn's one. That's my fault there, guys. I'm sorry. I really thought that that was... I thought that was winning. I didn't see that he had another exit point. Got to make sure of that. Okay, guys. Let's do this. Let's get amped up here. From here to here. What did that leave? It left this pawn. That was a defended. Also, uh, took up a square. It takes D. Oh, it also put it on so that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that wins a piece, doesn't it? Oh. There's your mate. Uh, okay, we gotta focus down. Don't we? I gotta remember not to move fast. It's an, anyways, that's my fault. Uh, we learned from that though, so that was interesting. We had to take there first. Okay, let's calculate, calculate. Look for um, the weaknesses behind the moves. We were close with that move. We were just a little bit too uh, soon with the take on that one. Okay, so here, here. So what did he take? So he took the pawn. And if we uh, played takes here, he has mate. Let's see, is there anything better? Yeah, this right here. I'm thinking potentially a check. Let's see here. Let's see here. There. There. takes, takes, and then uh, um, if he uh, takes here, we take there, so here, there, there, if he plays there, that's actually, uh, that might actually be a good move for him. Hmm. Hmm. 
let's see here. There, there. Actually, it's a bad move, my bad. That actually, I believe, does work. There, here, here. He plays there, then we move up, and he can't go back to win our queen. So, here, 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 there, there, and there. And then there, and then we win. There we go. Good, good find there, guys. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Oh, it was. You want to go back real quick, and I'll, I'll show you the idea. Here, So you, it was, it worked though. We had to walk our king over to protect the rook, and when we did that, boom, we win. Yay, we're, that's a happy day. Yeah, I I looked at that. This is the only move, and if he takes here, it's mate. Isn't that's weird? We're playing the inverse of our prior game. Yeah, it's like really weird, but we're playing the other side. That's kind of strange. Let me see here. Hmm. Hum, 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 hum. Hum dee hum dum. Mm -mm. Let's see here. I think one. Yeah, I think we could just take here, and then if he takes there, we take here. Rook takes, and then queen takes. Yeah. No, you can't take because you'll lose your queen. And remember, it's protected here. So first, you have to trade that. Yeah, this has to be played there first. And then what you have to do at this point? Let, let me let me let me remember. What did I did I miss something here? Oh yeah, yeah. Now we can take the the bishop. Because if he played this way, if he played this here, we'd be up at exchange. Yeah.
Well, he's so close to being checkmated. It's too bad we can't go here, because then the king would only have really... If he goes here, then we... Oh, rats, we don't have our bishop. Snap. So close to him getting taken down. Oh, interesting. Too bad we can't play there. Snag, snikies, that's a pain. But he has theirs. Oh, I guess you're right, because that does cover that and that, doesn't it? And if he comes here, we play there. Then he'd have to come over there. Hmm. I don't really see that we have enough. Hmm. I think the queen's trapped. We win a rook if we play knight uh, c2. We win an exchange. <coughs> But actually, am I wrong? Oh yeah, it does because the rook guard, the bishop guards the that point there. Yeah, it is the. It's actually one of the most forcing, I believe. It is force one of the forcing lines because then the queen would have to come there. And then we check, and if he comes. Up here, we can actually play knight there, and it's check. Huh. Or maybe even better. What am I thinking? I I I I. This and this, and then if he comes here, let's see here, check comes up we check comes over hmm and then we check there and we win if he plays there we just come back and we're almost close to mate on him huh it's close to trap it has one spot left Well, if we play here, uh, that's taken. Oh, he does have that, doesn't he? The queen does have have c3 in there. Hmm. So it does have, it has these two points. But we're so close if he moves here, or actually, more likely he'd move there. And then we have a sweet check comes up and then we can actually check there. And then we come here, we're forking the yeah, I believe I think it has to be if I'm not mistaken, that has to be the move. That has to be the, that's got to be the move. I don't really see anything else. It has so many threats to it. 
it's long distance threats. So, what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm with you on that. I believe that that's the move. I'll show you what I was talking about. If he plays here, first you'd have to come here. Then he comes up there, and he checks. And if he comes here, you come there. And then if he comes up here, you win the queen. Something like that. Yeah. Good find there, guys. Good job. That's really, really good. Let's see here. Okay. That's a point that is no longer, this is no longer guarded. See any checks that I think we have that first. So you're saying, hmm. I think potentially you're right. I think you're right on that one. I think that might, that's probably right because even if there we have that. And when the queen moves here, we play bishop takes rook. Bishop takes rook. Bishop takes. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Hey, we found what move he moved. <laughs> uh, uh. 
Oh, that's funny. Uh, hey, we we solved it all the way to the end. Yeah. Let's see here. Snap this knight's guarding that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, that's funny. That is for sure. Oh, wait a second. Do we have a smother mate potentially here? Actually, I think we win a rook. If he moves here, yeah, I think we actually win a rook. Yeah, cause that that wins if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, otherwise what what we do is we'll play here. Oh, snap. Snap, snap. Snappity, snap, snap. Oh, s darn it. That's irritating, for sure. That uh, is. Yeah. I needed to open up my uh, vision a little more. Oh boy, boy. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get on a spree of green here. Bishop B6. Let's see here. I think we have to keep. Uh, it's potentially maybe a knight takes, or a queen takes, maybe. So we think knight takes. It does. It does push the uh, push the tempo, but I'm just a little concerned about that. I'm not sure if we have enough compensation for that. I think that is the cleanest because if we take here, here, let's play we play there, right? He's got bishop that's hammering that. I believe it's queen takes. Is is that like what you're saying? Yeah. Because I'll show you what the problem with the other one is. It's if we take here, he's got that there. Then if we try, let's say doubling up here, he's got bishop there. And if we try here, I believe he can actually. Uh, push the pawn and almost fork everything. Yeah, that would not be fun. Ouch. So we don't want that. Not not at all. We don't want that. For sure. For sure. Let um, me see here. Hmm. Do 
Do we have anything though? Let's see, there, there, there. Yeah, I was looking at that, but I'm not sure. I think it's forced. I'm concerned about that. Yeah, this doesn't, this, this doesn't, it just trades down and actually activates as king. We do have that, though. But I don't really see any uh, anything better. Okay, I guess we're forced now to actually do that. Snap, crackle, and pop. I just want to hold the pawn. Rook C5. Trying to see this see there, there. What can he do after this though? Let's say he moves his king up. Okay, then we play there. Rook takes. Rook takes. Queen takes. Queen takes. Okay, queen c5 and queen d2, okay. We play here. We'll say king up. 
there. Um, rook takes queen. Rook takes queen. Pawn takes queen, and then queen takes queen. I don't. I think we actually lose our queen in that line. So here, here, there, up. And the rook comes back there. I think it, I think it does. Because here, here, there, 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 and there, and the queen is safe. Oh, man, this is a, uh, a tight, tight uh, game here. Thinking potentially it might be here, and then if takes check takes takes king up, and then we take. I think it's this, and if he plays there, we play that, and if he plays here. Then we can bring our rook over and stop this pawn. I believe it's that, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it's b5. Right. Here, here, there. If he moves up, we take. And then the rook comes back and takes. Then we take there. And what happens is if the rook tries to come over, we'll say here, we move our rook right there. And then we win. Well, if he does that, I believe we potentially do we do we win? Let's see if he plays there. And he takes. Then we actually can play check, takes, takes. Huh? I guess you're right on that. Hmm. Then I guess the only move would be there, 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 up, over, rook takes, and then takes there, and we walk this pawn down the board. I believe it has to be a check. I think it's the check. So he takes, takes, king moves up, 
you slide over, rook takes, and you take there. And we have this pass pawn that we can uh, sh shimmy up the board if you place there. You can actually play push. If it gets in behind, push. And pawn up. Hmm. Yeah. We'll do one more. That's a pain in the drain. So I think we uh, I think we have to take here that if he takes here we move up, push, and then we queen before he does. No king um see here, here, there, and there's no way to stop. If he tries here, we queen. If he tries here, here, we queen. So knight takes d four. There is no, uh, if he plays there and he goes queen uh, e8, we take the knight. So here. There. 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 Hmm.
Yeah, I guess get, I get what you're saying. Hmm. But if we go there, he actually could check us, though. I guess we could come back at that point, huh? Then he would go back. Well, he uh, after we play here, he goes there. If we do that, he's got to check here. see here so if we take here he goes there we come back he pushes we check here he comes back we take with chat we queen would check takes our um, our knight I think it has I think it has to be the knight takes I think it does yeah Yeah, we'll we'll end on that uh, upbeat one. Not that they weren't all upbeat, but that was a pretty uh, fun one, and it's actually drawn. Thank you guys for logging on. This was really um, great. We're learning a lot. That I gotta say, that one was um, that prior problem. That was really enlightening on uh, looking for those uh, quiet moves and not being materialistic. That, that teaches us that. So, guys, remember the uh, U.S. Open is uh, still, not U.S. Open, sorry, the U.S. Championship is still going. Um, you know, it's I think it's at 2 Eastern Standard Time and then 11 Pacific Standard. So, it's at so if you guys were wondering what time, I don't know where you guys live, but that that's uh, where it is in the United States. So, guys, keep up the good work. Keep pushing forward. Remember, only go back to learn, not to dwell there. And you know what? There's always a plan to position. We just have to find it. And when we do, we get to say, we love it when a plan comes together. As always, guys, remember what Wesley So says, serve the Lord Jesus. And as I say, God bless, and I will see you next time on Chess Cruncher TV. Have a blessed rest of the night, evening, or and morning. I'll see you guys then, and be blessed.